Hello and welcome to another live coaching. How are you doing? Did you sail this week? Is it windy? Can you sail through the winter wherever you are? Where are you? Hey, Greg. Actually, Greg, I'm in Europe, so it is evening for me as well. Uh, I am off Maui, unfortunately, but family duty calls, and so I'm back in Europe and in the cold, dark days of Northern Europe. Hey, Matt. Uh, yeah, I traveled last week and I'm still getting over the jet lag, but just about over it. There were some good days I missed on Maui. Uh, I competed in the Aloha Classic. Did we have a live stream after the Aloha Classic? Um, I think I did. Why so interested in Norwegian sailors? Oh, I just have a question. I just have a question about Norway. I'm going to send individual questions to people. Um, hey, Caro, Axel. Oh, Caro sailed in St. Peter. Nice. On a 4-4. Hey, Dom Dom. Cool. Tomaz is asking if my hair got blonde on Maui. I don't know. Did it? Did it change? Hey, Facebook user in Denmark, uh, you sailed on Tuesday, bump and jump, low tide. Sounds nice. Cool, cool, cool. All right. I feel a little bit out of it. I've been dealing with the jet lag. I think jet lag is something that you have to respect. Otherwise, um, like when I've tried to power through it, then I'm out for much longer. Um, so I've been trying to sleep, get in a rhythm and visit with my family. When I was in Europe, I mean, sorry, when I was in Maui, I was there alone and my family was on the other side of the world. So now it's nice to have some time with the kids and wife again, after a few weeks apart. Uh, yeah. Facebook user is saying it was interesting to see how normal the best look in the smaller conditions on the Aloha Classic. Yeah, it was tricky conditions with the Aloha. It was wind swell and light wind, gusty wind was was pretty tricky, tricky, tricky. Hey, Dennis. <laughs> Tomas is saying my hair looks great, does it? Maybe. I'm getting older. Uh, Facebook user had several good sessions last week. Side onshore yesterday worked cutbacks close to the beach cool that sounds good all right um i'm gonna pull up the facebook group but first i want to give a shout out to everyone that supports the live coaching through the patreon that's patreon.com slash we've got kare christopher vestrime axel greg Sam Williams, John Browers, Tomas Lotaki, Laura, Matthias, Fritz Seaman, Nick Yup, Samuli, Steen, Christoph Rucci, David Britton, Dom Dom, Dennis, Mario, Cedric, Ragnar, Matt, Jorg, Seberg, Tomas, Jorg, Irhenspurger, uh, Evgeny, and Eric. Thank you everyone for supporting. Um, and by uh, signing up for the Patreon, you get the newsletter and support the live coaching. So thank you for that. Um, so yeah, so if you're on Facebook, you have to give StreamYard permission. Um, yeah, so Ragnar, normally you your name does pop up. So I think you just have to refresh the permission every so often. I don't know exactly how it works. It's a little bit frustrating with StreamYard, but it's the best platform I've found for doing this live streaming. If there's another platform, I will switch to it. Hey, Edwin, good to have you with us. Uh, Edwin just got a new board. He was texting me about it. Very cool. Um, I love that you are adjusting to it so quickly as well, because often a new board takes some time to get used to, uh, but that's great. All right, I'm going to load up the Facebook group. Here we go.
go. All right. There is the Facebook group. And I'm just going to start going through it. So I'm going to refresh this page. I used to be able to close this little sidebar thing. And then that option went away. I don't know why Facebook changed that. It's a little annoying. Anyway. All right. Oh, Eric. Eric is also there. I'm um, sorry, Eric. I thought maybe you were Ragnar. All the Facebook users blended in together. Tomaz is saying he had a great freestyle session testing new fins from Finfoil. Nice. Tomaz, by the way, I'm still waiting for your Flocka technique. So Tomaz claims that he has the absolute best Flocka coaching technique that exists. And I am curious. I want to hear it. All right, let's go through the Facebook group. First up, we've got a post from Axel saying, do you have advice in terms of gear setup and sailing technique to improve getting and staying upwind? I'm struggling with this pretty often. I sometimes feel that I can't afford to ride a wave because I'm already too far downwind. Mostly, I take the wave anyways. There are worse things in life than a walk on the beach. This typically occurs when I'm a bit underpowered. But also when I'm overpowered, I find it hard to get up when. Okay, good question. So when you're underpowered, it's definitely harder to stay up wind. And so you want to rig a little bit bigger and also a bigger board, not just a bigger sail. Hey, Rich, welcome. Um, so also fins, 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 fins. So going with a bigger fin will help you for sure with staying upwind. And then you might find it useful to put your fins farther back on the board. will also help you to stay upwind. Um, I'm curious if other people have other tips for setting up the gear for staying upwind. Uh, Technique-wise for sailing upwind, you really want to twist your body and you want to look way more upwind than you're trying to go. And so if you're, if you're trying to go here, you're looking and twisting your body up here. So you're aiming your board way higher than you're trying to go. I find it really useful. And this is one reason why I like a harness that's so loose. I've got my harness turned on my torso so that my so if, if the wind is coming from there, my harness hook is, is twisted around. So it's on the side of my torso. So my whole upper body is twisted so that it's facing into the wind, but then the hook can still be straight on with the sail. And that is a body position that is very helpful for getting upwind. Hey, Max, I wonder if you guys in the chat have other tips for getting upwind, staying upwind. Uh, this is a very important topic for wave sailing. Um, is that Eric or Ragnar? Ragnar is saying, oh, no, I don't know who that is. I don't know why the Facebook user thing. Anyway, great question. I want to hear other people's comments. Make sure you have a big enough fin. You can put your fins more back and then make sure that your body is twisted into the wind and you're looking farther upwind than you think. Those are my initial initial bits of advice i want to hear what other people have to say as well all right yurko is saying which foot do you put first in the foot straps front or back i learned putting the back foot first mostly for avoiding catapults how do the pros do it i put my front foot in and first and that's pretty much all i've ever seen so I'm not used to seeing people do it with the back foot first, uh, though I have seen that. It's not that I've never seen it, uh, but I'm used to putting the front foot in first. And often, actually, I'll sail around with the back foot completely out of the strap because my straps are set up pretty far back on the board for how I want to ride the wave. So sometimes what's most comfortable when I'm just sailing back and forth is having the back foot 
out of the strap. So often a hokipa, I'm sailing around with just the front foot in the strap even. All right, next up, we've got a question from Matthew Peterson seeking some waist harness advice. He used to sail with a very tight harness so that the hook basically stayed put and would be where he expected it to be. Uh, but he says, I have found this restricts my breathing a bit when struggling after a fall. I tried Graham's method of sailing with a fairly loose harness, but the whole thing rides up and the hook flops around when I'm trying to swing my hips in to grab the lines. Can anyone suggest a harness or spreader bar system that allows a fairly comfortable loose fit both with a more locked in hook that doesn't ride or flop about? So you want to have a fixed hook harness. The harnesses with sliding hooks will be way too loose if you're riding the whole harness loose. Uh, and then you want that unit to be tight. So the circle itself is tight. And so you have a big circle, but that circle isn't too wobbly or floppy. I use the Dekine, uh, I, I post it here, it's the Dekine Renegade Travel Light. And it's a lightweight harness. I've been pretty happy with it. It doesn't have a ton of support, which I like. I don't like harnesses that are too yeah. stiff. Uh, but if you are looking for more support in your harness, then one of the other Dekine options or one of the other harnesses on the market would be better. All right. Some good advice here from other people as well. Yeah, so I'm doing my coaching today an hour earlier. I think I'm gonna stick with this at least while I'm in Europe. How does that work for you guys? How How is that for the group? Uh, for me, it's a bit better because otherwise it just ends up being quite late and I'm still getting over my jet lag, so I'm on an early, early rhythm. Uh, but yeah, nine nine feels a bit too late at the moment, especially with these dark days. Hey, Thomas. Cool. Sounds like eight is better for most people. So that's what we're going to stick with for the time being. All right. This is a great question from John. A genuine question. How do you become a stronger windsurfer when the conditions get tougher, both in terms of wind strength and sea state, many continue to excel. They are still getting themselves into position, finding the ramps and looking fairly comfortable. Of course, the obvious answer is they have more ability and skills. Gear setup obviously comes into play. I speak of my last two sessions only due to the relevance of my question. First session, I was overpowered on a four meter but stuck with it. I didn't sail particularly well. Second session next day went for three, six, just had the one run like the day before, very overpowered. Didn't want to make the same mistake. So came straight back in and re-rigged a three, three better, but still overpowered. Didn't have smaller to rig, kept at it, but was hard work where I really struggle is letting off the wind. I tend to hover into the wind more, especially in the gusts. I do try to bear off, hit Mach 10, get pinged off. I then witness the other sailors who are on the same size kit as the day before, but still looking comfortable and passing me downwind. What are they doing different? How does one get to their level? Is their stance different? Are they depowering the rig? Is there any techniques or exercises or practices? I'm okay not being at their level, but would just like to get better. All right, great, great question. I love this question. Thank you, John. Uh, this is, seems like such a simple, subtle question, but it's something that I think a lot of people deal with and is not actually very simple once you start to dive into it. There's a lot that can be done with gear. So I'm going to give some of my answers and then I want to look at some of these comments. We've got 54 comments. This is awesome. A lot of discussion going on in this post. If you guys in the chat have some answers, I'd love to hear it. Um, I know a lot of you windsurf in really strong winds, difficult, low pressure conditions in Europe. What's your answer to this question? So my first thoughts are that you want to get the gear tuned right. You want to make sure that your small sails have enough downhaul. Uh, you want to make sure that 
your small sales feel good. It can be hard to get the small sales tuned right because you're not used to sailing them very often. It can be if you're a bigger person that on those small sales, instead of using a 340 mast, you actually want to use a 370 mast and you can have a bit of mast sticking out the top. Or if your sail doesn't have a variable top, you can cut the bottom of the 370 mast and make it into a 340, but it will be stiffer. And that might be better if you're heavier, if you're say over 85 kilos or 90 kilos and you're using three sevens, three sixes, three fours, that might be a good option. Hey, H, H has shown up in the chat. We haven't seen him in ages. Welcome back, buddy. Um, yeah, nice that you've been on the water. Nice to see you in the chat. It's been a while. Awesome to have you. Uh, what were you working on? Where were you sailing? How was it? All right, let's get back to this question. Maybe H has a good comment as well. So he was saying that, or so that the topic is sailing in overpowered conditions. How do you feel comfortable? How do you become a stronger windsurfer in these conditions? Hey, Ogoose, welcome to the chat. So I want to hear from you guys. I, you know, this this is such a good question. It's something that we all deal with. So what I just said is, is rigging the small sails has its challenges. You want to make sure that you're downhauling them enough. Sometimes really downhauling these sails can be helpful. Uh, it can be hard if you're outhauling them too much because it kind of kills the sail. Uh, if you're a heavier person, sometimes using a stiffer mast is good. Uh, so you can cut down a 370 or just use a 370 if you have a variable top on your sail. Um, H is saying that he loves sailing overpowered. So what are, what are your tips, H, for sailing overpowered? Uh, sometimes I find it useful to move the mast track farther forward and other times farther back. So I move the mast track farther forward if I feel like I need to keep the nose of the board down. So sometimes when I'm overpowered, this happens to me a lot in Pozo, I feel like the nose of the board wants to go all over the place. And so I move my mast track farther forward in those overpowered conditions. And that keeps the nose down and it allows me to sail faster going out and sail more comfortably with speed. But sometimes you wanna move that mast track farther back, which then allows you to sort of sit more on the tail and you're, you're pushing more water, but that can give you more of a feeling of control. And one of the themes that comes back again and again and again is that you really wanna test, 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 play with your gear, see what works, see what feels good. And it's not always gonna be the same depends on the specific conditions. It depends on your board. It depends what's going on. Uh, so I would try moving the mast track two centimeters farther forward, two centimeters farther back. See how that feels. Does it help you? Does it hurt you? Same with the boom height. I often find that moving the boom higher gives me more control in the high winds. And I like that. So for example, in Pozo, I've got a higher boom than I do on, on Maui. But I know that other people really like having a lower boom in those conditions, and they feel like that gives them a more steady sail. Uh, I don't have that feeling. I feel like I want to have a higher boom. The sail feels a bit lighter. I have more leverage on the rig. And so I, I like the feeling of the higher of the higher boom. But I know other people that do like a lower boom in the strong winds. So again, it's really worth testing it and trying it out for yourself. Hey, John. All right, so we've got, so Yurko is saying that practice, 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 definitely the case. Uh, James is saying that he had some flat water blasting, working on fast tax and jibes. Nice. What are you working on in the jibes, James? Um, curious. Uh, H is saying the board matters. So having a small width on the board. This is a really good point. Having a really wide board. So John, I don't know what your board is, but if you have a really wide board, that's also going to make it harder in overpowered conditions. If you have a really wide tail, it's going to make it more difficult. John had a heavy duty subsession yesterday, getting his pulse up to 186. Hey, Samuel. Uh, H likes a low boom, lots of downhaul, but not too much outhaul to keep some shape in the boom. I, I like that rigging as well for the smaller sails. Um, 
Carl likes to do endurance and strength training to help with those conditions. All right, let's go and see. I want I, If you guys have some thoughts, I want to hear it. Uh, Ragnar is saying, uh, there we go, Ragnar. I can see you now in the comments. Uh, long harness lines and lower boom works better for him in those conditions. Let's see what, what other people are saying in the comments. Um, so, John, I don't know how big you are. Let's see. Do you have, say your weight somewhere, John? So you're about... I don't know how big you are, but it might be that you want to go with a smaller board. Yeah, stance is important. So this is a good question from Roy. Um, do you have a picture of your sailing? Stance is important as is the length of your harness lines and position on the boom. Changing those three things has made a world of difference for him. Yeah, this is a great, this is, I like this question a lot. Uh, so how you're standing and how you're using your body mechanically can make a big difference and where your harness lines are. And so if your harness lines are too far back, obviously you're gonna be getting pulled forward. But of course, if your harness lines are too far forward, you might not notice it right away. It might not feel wrong because the sail feels fine, but actually that can also be just as bad because then you're not really able to sheet in. And so then you're having to rig the sail weird in order to get power out of it. And if you're sheeting in, then you have to use your muscles instead of your body weight through the harness. And so having the harness lines a little bit farther back can really be useful. So I, there's a, a tip for finding the balance point where your harness lines are. So if you have your sail just on the beach, you hold on to the, you can hold on to the harness lines with the, the sail connected to the board and try and find the spot where the, the sail balances. I actually like my harness lines a little bit back from that point. So about a centimeter or two centimeters back from that point. So the, the harness lines are a, a little bit back from the balance point on the sail. And that means that, I can use my body weight to help sheet in the sail, which helps it go faster. This is definitely for more advanced windsurfers, but John, I think that you are in that more advanced category. Uh, but again, it's something to try. And if it doesn't feel right, if it feels wrong, then change it back. All right, so let's get back to the chat. Um, so Facebook user saying is back in my race board days, coach told us that in strong wins, best defense is attack. Easier said than done, but it does work. Yep. Um, John is saying he should do some weight training. Any tips for getting started? Uh, Cedric is our resident sports scientist. I don't know if he's in the chat. Otherwise, there are a few other programs. Uh, Sarah Hauser has her program and Sasha Lang has his program online as well as pp2 trust uh, who we have not had on the stream i've had both sarah and sasha uh, samuel is saying uh too much foiling has made him forget get low before you go uh sailing defensively doesn't help in strong winds yeah john wants modular training program So H uses a wave seat harness and uses my technique with the harness lines. Um, yeah, I think that there's some value in, in seat harnesses. I use a waist harness, but I like to wear it low. Andy is saying, does a thruster jibe better than a single fin? Um, I don't know. It depends a lot on the board. I would say probably the single fin jibes better. I mean, the thruster might be easier to initiate, so I think it really depends on your ability. If you have the ability to carve the board and turn the board, the single fin should jibe the best. But if you need a little bit of help in the turn, then having the thruster will jibe better. All right, let's get back to the Facebook group. Um, 
Yeah, lots of good, lots of good comments here. So John, I hope that you can figure it out. All right, next up, we got a question from Ragnar. Board on the rocks. Oh no, that doesn't sound good. So John, we did, I don't know if you saw the live stream with, so John is asking about uh, fitness. So Cedric came on two weeks ago on the live stream and we talked about fitness and he's a sports scientist, has a ton of knowledge and wisdom. I don't think he's with us right now, but he's often on the live streams and he's an active member in the group. And you can check out that live stream. We talked about windsurfing fitness, but there are some good options available with Sarah and Sasha and PP. Uh, but Cedric also might be worth talking to. Um, I'm sure he would be open to doing some consulting or something like that. All right. Anyway, back to Ragnar, Board on the Rocks. He is sharing a video where he made some mistakes that made his board end up on the rocks. It was straight onshore on a 5.8. The area inside the wave break is rather shallow and full of stones, difficult to swim or walk. A day with small waves. Uh, catching waves upwind is not a good idea. He probably should have skipped this one and sail upwind. He was too late to drop in, should have made a sharper bottom turn, forced the cup back. Uh, tried to aim, he should have tried to aim towards the beach. Uh, all right, let's watch the video. Okay, the video is a bit long. Where's the... Okay, let's see. Let's see what happens here. Looks nice. That looks like there's some size to it. It's hard to tell with these cameras, but looks like there's some size. All right, so he's fallen. Oh, yeah, it's always hard to let go. Or what am I trying to say? Often you want to hold on as much as possible and letting go leads your gear to be dragged a lot farther than it would otherwise be. And so holding on like your life depends on it because sometimes it does is often, often the way to go. And then, yeah, swimming, swimming hard, hard, hard. Often not going on the rocks is all about just holding on, holding on, holding on, holding on, and then swimming, swimming, swimming like crazy. Um, those are those are the two main. Ooh, and then you're in on the rocks. But yeah, those are the two main ways to avoid going on the rocks is holding on and then swimming like crazy if you do lose it. And then getting off the rocks. Yeah, this can be a bit tricky, but generally I want to hold my gear kind of up and then walk through the rocks out as far as I can and then get it out to the point where I can body drag and then water start when I feel like it's deep enough. Uh, but really the key here is holding on. So it's at this moment before you lose the gear. So, okay, we fall. And then the wave is coming and just hold on, hold on, hold on. And you're strong, you'll be able to hold it. Yeah, really just holding it. You're not in the ideal position here for the, for the wet water that's coming at you. But yeah, if you, like you said in the chat, if you grab the boom, one hand on the boom, one hand on the mast, you would have been fine and you wouldn't have gone on the rocks. And a lot of times that's all it takes not to go on the rocks. All right, next up. I'm thinking of doing, well, I'm not thinking, I'm actually actively planning, already filmed for it, a Vulcan Air Jive Masterclass. So stay tuned. All right. This is an old video. We already talked about that. All right. Here is a post from Jorg. Had some time to run through picks 
uh, made during the year while having a cold started to look in more detail about my bottom turns. What do you suggest to further focus on? My focus has been to bend the knees, get low, wide grip, butt out where I can see the progress from before during and after the Denmark masterclass. Jorg was on our masterclass in Denmark week two. Shout out. What I can see, I think leaning more towards the front, looks like I'm more heavy towards the back. All right, let's look at some of these pictures. So these look fine. I think the main thing, Jorg, is I want to see you uh, sheeting out more, actually. I think for the kind of onshore wind that you get most of the time, uh, you end up sheeting in past the point where you should be sheeting in. And so you can actually really actively sheet out and that allows you to lean more over the center line of the board. So like this picture where you're really pushing the sail out and leaning over the center line of the board compared to like this, where you're sheeting in more and you're much over the center line of the board, where you're not really able to get the board on the rail. So see like these, you're much over the board and the board's not as much on the rail. And then here where you're sheeting out more, leaning more over, the board gets on the rail. So that would be the main thing to add to your list. Um, I think really getting that sheeting out in the onshore conditions is really important for the bottom turn. All right, I'm trying to find some Norwegian windsurfers for a question. So I'm gonna email some of you guys randomly. All right, Alex shared this video about back loops. Yeah, I've been traveling, so I haven't actually had a chance to watch this, but I will. Thank you for sharing. All right, this is an old thread. We already talked about this stuff, uh, but there's some new posts. Um, I don't know, Alex is, I don't know if this is spam or not. Alex, if you're in the chat, let us know if this is spam or not. It's a survey. All right, Nicolas, forward loop, a step further, coming through until the water start, right on. On this photo, I'm not looking backwards enough, but over all the attempts of the last three weeks in Gostoso, I managed to feel that I had to prepare better before the initiation, getting more centered over the board and going far more downwind than I was used to before the jump. I'm still struggling with the extension of the front leg. That is why I'm still coming out of the front strap, but super happy that I'm able to water start out of my forward. Nice. I love it. All right. So this picture, we don't have a whole lot to go on, uh, but you could be looking more over your rear shoulder, which also will help you loop more horizontally, which will make it so that the nose of your board isn't hitting the water and stopping your rotation. So you're better able to land on your back. Also getting a bit more height, you're going quite low, which is fine. You can do forwards like that. Great way to start, but getting a little bit more height with the same technique, you'll probably start landing them. So good work. All right, we already talked about MFTs forwards. All right, we've got another post from Jorg about cutbacks. And so we posted these stills. Some of these look really radical. Um, I, I should pick out the ones that I like the best. I love this one. This one is awesome. I can see the board on the rail. You're getting this beautiful positioning. I can see the spray coming off. Sweet. Um, so what I want you to work on, because what I didn't read your post, but I read it before. I try to read everything that's posted in the group. And you're asking for some tips, some things to work on on the cutbacks. And a lot of people in the comments talk about grip and all these other things. Sure. But the main thing I want you to focus on is not twisting your body. And so what we see in the cutbacks that are not working as well that your body is twisting more. So see like in this one, where you're really trying to push that sail forward, you're twisting your body. It's like you're lifting up with the back leg and kind of tweaked around. Whereas in this one, you're hanging from the sail 
you're on the heels, driving the board, getting it on the rail, and your body is fairly straight. Your shoulders are in line with your feet. Whereas this one, your shoulders are pointing this way and your feet are pointing this way, right? They're really twisted around. And so that is the position that I want you to avoid. I don't want you to think about forcing your cutbacks. Think about just sitting on the heels, getting the butt low, keeping those shoulders in line with your feet and just letting the board do the work for you. If you're working hard, you're doing it wrong. Just let the board do the work for you. I love this shot. Great cutback. So don't twist. That's that's the main thing. How do we get out of this? All right, we've got Facebook user saying he was seriously stoked to get back out on Hatteras Island for some sessions, both in the sound and in the ocean last week. Felt amazing to be back in such a warm ocean. It's a huge treat for me. Nice. Tasty Northeasters on tap for this week and looking forward to some south side action. Nice. Is that Jeff? I, I, I guess this is Jeff. Otherwise, let us know who it is. Hatteras can be fun. I used to go down to Hatteras when I was going to school in New Jersey. Um, Hatteras can be definitely fun. So, Jorg, focus on not twisting. Just focus on the one thing. Just think of this body position, not this body position. You want hanging from the boom, not pushing the sail forward, and on the heels. Oh, it's Dana. Oh, my gosh. What a legend. We've got Dana Miller in the chat. Uh, Dana... I remember advice that Dana gave me when I was a kid on Maui. One of the things that Dana told me, which is such great advice, is to put time in on a big board with a small sail to work on the sail handling skills. And so to go out on a really big board and like a 3-0 and work on doing sail 360s and heli tacks and all these other things. Dana, I don't know if you remember giving me that advice. I must have been 12. It must have been 20 years ago. And But it was very good advice. I did that. And it definitely helped my sailing. And I recommend everyone else to do it. Dana, have you sailed a lot on the East Coast? Uh, Hatteras, Hatteras can be a lot of fun. You can get really good waves there. Um, yeah, it can be super fun. Nice. I hope you get good conditions. All right, these are all old threads. All right. We talked about this forward loop already. We talked about that. There's an old live stream. Did we talk about this one, Alistair? Yep, we did talk about that one. I think we're all cut up somehow, somehow, somehow. That went pretty quick. Um, so we are caught up. And so James, by the way, what are you working on in your jibes? You said you were working on jibes earlier. I'm really fascinated by jibes. I, I want to post some jibing video um, and and talk about, talk about jibes. When I... The last few times I've been free riding, I was really focusing on these big free ride boards on uh, doing carving, planing, jibes. And yeah, it's tricky and it's fun. It's fun. It's fun to work on trying to get, get come out of the jive with a lot of speed and stay on the rail the whole time. Uh, so I want to post some video, talk about what, work, what works for me and then hear what other people uh, are working on in their jibes. Uh, yeah. And you're working on fast tags. James, were you on the fast tag course that I did earlier this year? I know a bunch of bunch of you guys were. Um, yeah, Yurko is saying that slalom is good training. I did when I was a kid, I did slalom on Maui, but it was with a wave board. They had a wave board division and you could Yeah, it was like a wave board division. And it was fun. I, I definitely learned a lot about jibing and racing and stuff like that. 
I enjoyed it. That, I don't think that exists anymore. That was the Maui Race Series, which maybe the Maui Race Series still exists, but I don't think it's as big as it used to be. All right, everyone. I want to give a huge shout out to all the supporters who are supporting the live coaching on Patreon. We've got Kare, Christopher Vestrime, Axel, Greg Santo, Sam Williams, John Browers, Tomas Lutaki, Laura, Matias, Fritz Zeman, Nick Jupe, Samuli Hamalainen, Steen Harms, Christoph Rucci, David Britton, Dom Dom, Dennis, Derek, Mario Gozetti, Cedric Unholz, Ragnar Lindholm, Matt Gold, Jorg Seaburg, Tomas Suba, Jorg Ahrens Purga, Evgeny Nissenboim, and Eric Asum. Thank you. Uh, if you want to support the live coaching and sign up for the newsletter, you can do that at patreon.com slash Graham Essie. There's a link somewhere, somewhere, somewhere. And you get articles uh, related to windsurfing and getting better in windsurfing regularly. And thank you everyone else for showing up. Uh, it's great to have you guys here. I'm still a bit jet lagged. So I feel like, like my brain has gone through a blender. Uh, I'm not planning to get in the water the next week. I've got to catch up on a lot of work stuff. Uh, but I will see you next week, Sunday. And in the Facebook group, remember to post your questions, photos, videos, comments, all of the above. I'll see you guys in the Facebook group and see you next week, Sunday. All right, take care. Have fun. I hope it's windy. Have a good week. Bye-bye.